Will attempting to hack your Switch 2 actually break your device? In this video, I will explain as a data scientist why it's a lie. So Nintendo updated their end user license agreement. Nintendo reserves the right to brick your console following unauthorized use. Nintendo had revised their end user license agreement and it has taken effect as of May 7th. Disclaimer, this video is not intended to promote any forms of piracy. It's strictly created for the sole purpose of educational content. So therefore, viewer discretion is advised. In my last video, we spoke about different methodologies of hacking the Nintendo Switch 2. I also explained that one of those methodologies could be known as voltage glitching. And I was quite skeptical this was impenetrable. And then I saw this. Switch, now known as the MIG Flash, is a flash cart designed for the Nintendo Switch. That allows the device to function on the Nintendo Switch 2. What's Nintendo's real motive? Because Nintendo's been knowing about emulators since the early 2000s. My first ever emulator was Project 64, and I emulated Zelda Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Banjo-Kazooie, Donkey Kong, okay. the list goes on. So why now? Why has Nintendo absolutely bullied the likes of Soulja Boy, despite his game console being a complete ripoff? Talk about Kanye West. Kanye West? Nigga, I'm Young Draco. I came out with my own video game console. It made a million dollars and made Nintendo come and try to sue me. Nintendo! Why have they absolutely bullied the owners of the Dolphin emulator? Ryu Jinx? And even Yuzu ends the bit for Suyu. The evidence clearly shows that Nintendo wants one thing. And that one thing is control. Psst, psst, but that's him. You know, the prices of the games, they had to be 80 to $100 because inflation. Oh, no, 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 no. Follow me, follow me, follow me. It was debunked by a multitude of tech YouTubers in the space that are highly respected. And this myth has been debunked. Nintendo has been in healthy profit margins despite inflation. Therefore, there was really no justification except for greed to increase the prices to what they are now. Nintendo has been extremely profitable at just $60 per game. Here's the bottom line. Nintendo don't want you to play the Nintendo Switch how you want to. You will sit there in your little bedroom and you'll play the Nintendo Switch how we want you to play the little Nintendo Switch. You got that buddy? Where exactly did this rumor come from? Let's actually read a credible source, read exactly what Nintendo has reserved the right to do to your purchased console. You are not allowed to lease, rent, publish, sublice, copy, modify, adapt, translate, reverse engineer, decompile, disassemble any parts of the Nintendo, Nintendo services without Nintendo's written consent or basically the law can say it so that's how it was written before basically you know don't tamper with the nintendo accounts this is what the new one says and this is a bit beefy you acknowledge that if you fail to comply and this is what's different so pay attention you acknowledge if you fail to comply with the foregoing restrictions nintendo may render the nintendo services or the applicable nintendo device permanently unusable in whole or in part. Where then, where then, where then is vital to any conversation. Prior the agreements was Nintendo stated that do not tamper with the device, whether you have Nintendo's written consent or it's been approved under the eyes of the law. However, now the where then has been rephrased to do not tamper with the device unless you have Nintendo's consent. Otherwise, we, <laughs> we reserve the right to render your device or your Nintendo account in whole or in part useless which basically does state that they can break your device however why is it then i started this video with stating that it's a lie the reason why is it's not fully a lie obviously it's in clear black and white that they reserve the right to break your device but as a data scientist and from what i've seen sorry to interrupt the show i was just editing the video and i realized that i failed to include the new mechanisms nintendo's put into place therefore i will include that here and then we'll get back to the show thank you for your time Right, I'm going to cover this in one to two minutes and this part of the video is so important to avoid your Nintendo Switch from getting bricked as I've seen videos of people plugging in MIG switches and absolutely bricking their devices. And guess what? Oh yeah. Super, super banned. Right, so pay attention because I promise you, I absolutely promise, once you understand this concept, it will all click and you'll understand what on earth we are trying to do in the world of emulation. It all starts with this thing called data, which is stored in data warehouses. So basically you have a switch right here. Nintendo collect your data, pass it to people like myself. 
this data through a data life cycle. It's called a data science life cycle. And yes, we do collect text data, audio data, and visual data. And have you understood that Nintendo has recently pushed online gaming like it's a new thing? No, it's not a new thing. They're just after more data to basically train their ML models. It's very simple. They'll put it into this warehouse and then they'll train their ML models. Very simple. Oh, Nassi, why the hell are we talking about data when we want to speak about the mix switch? What on earth is going on here? Why are we talking about bricking? And what has this got to do with ML models and AI again? Let's talk about this. Nintendo has what's known as an all seeing eye. Okay. <laughs> Nintendo has what's known as an all seeing eye, i.e., a server. These are called servers. And these servers are connected to the Nintendo Switch. And the way they've set this up is that the Nintendo Switch now has to be connected to the server to even function. When you boot your Nintendo Switch 2, you're connecting to Nintendo's server. This authenticates your license key, device integrity, also your code and your location. It's all being recorded. Big Switch is known as a third party device. You're putting in a third party entity, i.e. foreign code into your Switch. And what did we discuss in the last video? That a user land exploit hasn't happened yet. Nintendo's server will scan your Nintendo device. And if it detects any data that is foreign or even metadata, it's not actually the Switch that bricks you. It's Nintendo detecting that foreign entity and then rendering your device useless. What's the solution to this? First, be aware of what's going on. How is Nintendo blocking you in the first place? That, how do we actually avoid this? What we're after is Nintendo's firmware. Nintendo will not give you this firmware, but this is where we need to get this firmware out of this device. This is how emulation happens. Obviously, we need the configuration of the hardware and how they render graphics and things like that. But the main thing that this, the primary focus is this firmware. And this is to avoid license key checks and things like that. How do we actually solve this? There's two ways. One is software exploit and two is hardware exploit. If you manage to tamper the hardware, you've got access to the whole device. But Nintendo's software is a different story. The only way you can hack this and the way the people do it is they download all the data from Nintendo legally and then they cut off the I central server can't detect your foreign code. In my personal opinion, the only way this is happening is through a hardware exploit. Is the main one come through trying to take down Nintendo server? This is going to come through a Nintendo hardware circuit because at the end of the day, you own this device. You can't tinker with it. Now, I know Nintendo has put some safety mechanisms, but it's not being confirmed. I will discuss that in a future video. Security and hardware tampering and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you got to understand that this isn't like Nintendo's making this out to be Fort Knox or something or some sort of high security vault. This is a mid-range gaming PC at best. That's it in your hand. So, so for Nintendo to put all these fear tactics and put the fear of God into hackers, I truly believe 95% of this is just scare tactics. And I still believe that we will have a secure kernel takedown within 6 to 12 to 18 months. That's the range I'm given. And if you don't know what a secure kernel takedown and why it's important, then watch my previous video, which is here. And yeah, that's it for today. Leave down in the comments below what you think. Will the Nintendo Switch be hacked? Is it the Nintendo fanboys running wild? Or am I completely wrong? And will Nintendo actually brick your device? Thank you so much for watching. This has been Nassim from System Decoded. I will speak to you soon. Take care and have a beautiful, blessed day.